Hi everyone, this is Alan Rosinski of Metro Manhattan Office Space. Good afternoon. Believe it or not, office rents in New York City are set to skyrocket. My prediction is that by the end of the 20s, average office rents in New York City are going to reach new records and exceed $100 a square foot. And that's not in the short term. We haven't hit bottom yet. Commercial rents for office space are still going to decline. But when people discuss, the experts, the pundits discuss the future of the market for office space in New York City, they focus on demand. How many businesses are going to need office space? How much square footage are they going to need? How many workers are gonna be returning to their office? What they tend to ignore is supply. And the supply of office space in Manhattan over time is going to adjust. So let's assume vacancy rates now are about 14% and rents are on their way down. And many of these buildings, many, many commercial office space buildings have high vacancy rates. Maybe some of them on the side street, some of the older buildings may have vacancy rates of 20, 25, 30% these buildings may be converted. Don't forget, there's a housing crisis at the moment. There's a lack of housing in New York City. People still wanna live in New York City. During the pandemic, they've gotten spoiled. They've gotten spoiled because they don't have to commute to their jobs. Now, when this is over, people are gonna be a lot less likely to tolerate a commute. They're gonna to wanna to be close to where they work because they're used to working from home. Now, the city of New York is gonna have an incentive with a lot of vacant buildings and less tax revenue, they're gonna have an incentive to allow the conversion of commercial buildings, commercial office buildings to residential use. In fact, the real estate industry is in favor of this. The Real Estate Board of New York, Revni, supports the conversion of office buildings in business districts to residential uses. So the sort of buildings which will be converted from commercial will be the side street class B, class C loft buildings, which with their smaller floor plates would make them good candidates for conversions to apartments. You could have small buildings with 5,000 square foot floor plates converted into each floor two apartments of 2,500 square feet, maybe three bedroom uh, apartments. Well, so many of the older avenue buildings on say Madison, Fifth Avenue, which are corner buildings. Now buildings which are located on corners have a lot of windows. Now if you have a lot of windows, it makes it easier to create well-lit apartments. Conversions of large office buildings without windows, without a large window line is problematic because people don't want apartments which are very deep and not well lit. So some of the older buildings on avenues which are located on corners will be good candidates for conversions to residential condominiums or even rentals with some element of affordable housing. Now we've seen this happen before. After the dot-com crash in 2000 and the September 11 terrorist attacks in 2001, many buildings in the financial district in Lower Manhattan, many commercial office buildings, were converted to a residential use, turned into condominiums, a few of them into rental buildings. And as a result, the financial district is the fastest growing residential neighborhood in New York City. Around 2001, it had a residential population of about 22,000, and that population has tripled to 66,000. In fact, you have some well-known buildings in Lower Manhattan which have been converted to residential use. Among the best known is the Woolworth Building, where the upper floor floors have been converted to very high-end residential condominiums. Now, it's very likely that something similar will occur in Midtown Manhattan, which is among the last major, or maybe the only major business district in New York City, which has not seen a wave of conversions of office buildings to residential housing. So what problems would allowing the conversion of office buildings to residential solve? Well, first of all, the city of New York and the state are gonna be in need of tax revenue. Office buildings, which are one-third vacant, 
are not going to generate revenue for the city. So converting a number of these buildings to residential condominiums will have owners paying property taxes. Also what it'll accomplish is it'll create more residential traffic, which will help revitalize retail, which of course is hurting after the pandemic. It will also create a better city with people having housing near where they work and not having to commute extensively. It'll make New York more appealing, and it will, of course, increase the supply of housing in a city where the supply of housing is scarce. So this is what's in store for the future. In many of these Class C, Class B buildings on the side streets and on the avenues, the leases very frequently have demolition clauses. So in the event that these buildings are sold and they're converted to a residential use, the landlord has the right to terminate the leases. So they don't have to wait for every lease in the building to expire or to buy out the tenants. In the event the buildings are sold and the zoning is changed and a developer wants to convert them, that process could occur in a couple of years. There's big changes ahead for New York City. Within 10 years, there'll be a lot more housing available, in my opinion, and commercial office space will be relatively scarce, with prices certainly much higher than they are now, and very possibly above the peak they achieved a few years ago. So um, this is a little bit of a different take on many analysts' opinion of the New York City office space market, but hope you find it interesting. Until the next time, take care now. If you found this content interesting or helpful, I'd be happy if you subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can always find me on Twitter. My Twitter handle is at Metro Manhattan. Until the next time.